Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. This episode, we're going to be talking about just the entire Eternal set just getting dropped staggeredly. Uh, some listener questions, and we'll discuss uh, some cool news about the end of the year show, episode 400, which is also coming up, and a few other uh, cool details on this episode of Dial H for Hero Clicks. This is episode 392. I'm your sexy ranch and co-host Calder Ness. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like a hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how do six yeah. people yeah. think I am funny? It's the hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which Absolute fools, it's not witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clips like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey Google, back some Let's attack him because he's a jerk. Wow, wow, wow. LH for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Click singles and sealed products. Make sure to check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Ah, uh, I wanted to do a funny cool stuff ink voice and I've already done it i've already passed by say la vie it's already i'll do it next week it's fine it's fine i completely forgot it plans i was thinking about shoving pringles in my eyes i could not it oh gosh completely it hey like but joining me like always Spencer, where you would you would like load the pringle it'd be like because they're stackable right so right they are stackable pack. yes Ooh, so like, a pringles pez dispenser type thing yeah, okay. except it's eyes. I'm with you. It's so like every time you blink, a chip falls out. Like, blink, blink, blink. You like just blink real quick, and then you've got like a handful of chips, and you're like, this oh my is gosh. so convenient. I'm Clearly so how the human body should have been designed. Yes. Um, that's a surgery I would get. Um, hey, you've already heard his voice, but joining me like always is my my friend, uh, co-host, Simeon Bruce. Oh, uh, Dialy Cheer, who's champion. I don't know why I said friend like that. Simeon's my friend. Hey, Simeon, what's up? What's going on? Just reach to the bottom of the cup, Calder. Reach your hand down the the Pringles can and get the last salty little chip out of there, Calder. Oh, the sour me and... cream and onion is so good. <laughs> I'm literally just quoting meat cannon so is that at a this meat, point. Is that a meat cannon it episode? Is, yeah. Is that, yeah, I know. It was like Dude, the most that... recent one. Um, Some scumbag. Yeah, I was try- trying to come up with my own thing, but... uh. He does it very well. He ups the creepiness. Like, how how you make Tony the Tiger and the Pringles can man into, like, these full-fledged eldritch horrors, I don't know. But, uh, and for anyone listening I mean, out there, don't look up anything that I just said. Please don't. I've made the mistake of being stuck at my being house. It, <laughs> being in Simeon's house and him showing them to me. Then... I say, you didn't have any option. I guess you could have that's just like, got up and walked outside. But... I've just left. I mean, that's really cool. <laughs> and then just stand outside for five minutes. <laughs> hey, is it over? Hey, all right. Hey, let's, now we can keep hanging out. Um, be rude thing to do. Hey, Simeon, what's, uh, what made you happy this week, my man? What's going on? What's yeah, going on in your life? <laughs> so what made me happy this week? I, this weekend... I have spent almost a total of ah, almost like $250 on just oh. board games. It's a lot. Oh. I've spent a lot yeah. of money on board games this week. Um, at first, I was like, ooh, these will make great presents. And then I was like, nope, I want this one. I want to keep this one. I'm going to keep this one. Uh, so I got the, I can't remember the full name of the game, but it's The Thing, um, like John Carpenter's. Uh, hmm. Kurt Russell. You actually can play as Kurt Russell's character. Uh, nice. Uh, that would be McCready. McCready, the helicopter pilot. Uh, oh. Yeah, you get to play as like different survivors in the outpost. I can't remember the full name of the game, but I'm sure if you type in the thing board game, it'll probably or like be the, the main thing that comes up. Outpost 34, 31 yeah, or something, right? Like what whatever it was. it was. Yeah, so it's it's like this very niche online game known as Among Us, uh, oh. where one <laughs> oh. I hate you. <laughs> where, uh, but no, it, it is similar. So you do, you've it's kind of like Betrayal. Uh, or like you not reference games. a movie that came out forty years ago to being like Among Us, <laughs> though. <laughs> it hurts. Yeah, the Go thing ahead. by John Carpenter is like this game <laughs> called <laughs> Among Us. Man, it's weird how we retroactively made this movie 
about this game. Um, but <laughs> so yeah, you you have one character that essentially uh, maybe they know, maybe they don't at the beginning. I haven't played okay. it yet, but uh, they will be trying to sabotage and kill off the rest of the crew while you're trying to survive and like gather supplies and get out of there, that kind of thing. So that one I'm really excited to play. Um, some of the other ones I got, I so there's Mysterium Park, which is a kind of a deck building. You want to make like the the creepiest, kookiest uh, theme park kind of not really theme park. It's more like a circus like a freak show kind of weird mm. thing. Um, so yeah, you're like building your park and you're buying sideshow attractions from other players and stuff like that. Um, and then because I can't find the original Sheriff of Nottingham anywhere, I got the second edition and it's ranked lower, which I'm hoping doesn't mean oh. that it's real bad. Cause I like the first one, but this is second edition. I already don't really love the artwork on the box compared to the first one, but it is what it is. Um, then I just kind of took a shot in the dark on a few other ones. There's Crosstalk, which is, it was just real cheap. It was on sale at Cool Stuff for six ninety nine. dollars um, Ooh, it Sounded that is cheap. fine for 7 bucks. Yeah, I'll, I'll try a game for 7 bucks. Uh, then I, I picked up Dice Upon a Time and Dawn of Mankind just because they seemed like uh, more strategy based than like party game kind of style, which Sheriff of Nottingham is mostly, it's like if all you did in poker was bluff or try and like misread your hand, that's what Sheriff of Nottingham is. It's just entirely trying to bluff one person or sometimes like reverse bluff, like, you know, you're slipping non-contraband goods past the sheriff and if they check you then they have to like pay you for wasting your time yeah. just like real life oh wait no not at all like real life no one ever no one ever pays me for wasting my time hmm. okay that, that's um, what made me happy okay uh, so that's Dude, no that's six awesome. total games um and then i guess part of that cost that 250 i also got some paint night kits um that I had been waiting on picking up. And I saw the the Tiamat, the WizKids Tiamat dragon in person. And it is pretty big. It is pretty but expensive that's not, and pretty that's big. That's not the adult green dragon. That's a different No, thing. but right. they did release the adult green dragon. See that. So that one angry D&D person on Twitter hounding WizKids can yeah. finally sleep at night now that they're adult green dragon is dragon is finally released. out uh no more adult green dragon delays uh-uh we have it finally gosh uh all right so i what made me happy so first of all i think it's funny that you said you were you bought that thing game simeon because i he doesn't listen to the podcast so i can say this my, i bought that for my little brother for christmas and i'm really excited to play that uh when i eventually give it to him so I think it's crazy that you also bought it. That's really cool. Um, what made me happy this week was we, uh, I am in a play right now, uh, Elf the Musical here in beautiful uh, Yanktown, Yankton, South Dakota. If you want to come up and see it, uh, for those that would have to drive, uh, let me check, hours and hours and hours to get here that listen all across the country, or if you somehow live close, um, is uh, 8th, 9th, 10th, and 11th. Or you just fly. Just fly on in to Sioux Falls, closest major airport, and drive an hour and 15 minutes Yankton, and, and watch Elf the Musical. I'm in it. So it's clearly worth all your hard-earned money and everything. Um, yeah, it was honestly one of those plays where if you've ever been in a play, there's kind of like that moment where it's like, man, you're, the play dates are coming up. You don't know how you're feeling. You don't know if it's going to come together, but... These last two practices, I was like, oh, you know, I was super uncertain. Like, nah, we are not going to have a show. Everybody in town is going to be like, what a waste of money. I can't believe they they shipped this product that was garbage and made us watch it and waste our time. Um, but nope, the last two rehearsals we had were crisp. They were solid. I was like, I was surprised by like how much progress we were making. I was like, you know what? We might actually have a in a play we might actually have a musical i i'm excited so that that just made me really happy seeing it progress seeing uh people certain people in the cast try harder um you know it's community theater not everybody there is uh, has the same 
whatever, you know. Uh, but yeah, I I was just super impressed with everybody and everything going on. And I'm just really happy and I'm excited to to get out there, get acting. Uh, I'm slightly bummed. I will shout out another uh, theater company near us, I think Wakefield, as a show. And that is uh, Die Hard. So they have Die Hard the Musical, which is a musical apparently. It's a good Christmas, um, yeah. Great Christmas movie, of course. Um, and yes, so if you want to go see Die Hard, if you want to do a play weekend, you can see our show uh, any of the days this weekend and also Die Hard any of the days this weekend. So if you want to do a little Die Hard on Friday, some Elf on Saturday, clearly two Christmas movies that are incredibly similar, um, Can you can do so. So yeah, uh, but yeah, musical theater, who'd have thunk? So fun. Fun. Right. Yeah, we have. Me, I wouldn't have thunk. Who wouldn't have thunk? Well, her head is full of straw, so you can't do a lot of thinking there, Simeon. <laughs> That's a Wizard of Oz reference. Oh, I saw Wizard of Oz last week. That's right. Called okay. Simeon Straw Man. If I only had a heart. Is that the the line? Oh, no, brain. Brain. Oh. It's a brain. That is full of straw. Yeah. Said you couldn't think. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. So anyways, in the news... Speaking of uh, we shipping bad products, ooh, <laughs> ooh, ooh, no, I like uh... it. I like it a lot. That was good. It was good. Oh, keep going. You're correct. Oh. I don't know why. I don't know why you'd stop. This is this is quality. So speaking of, uh, you know, product shipping, uh, WizKids first announced that we were going to get some staggered releases of the Eternals movie, just because the global shipping stuff is still kind of up in the air. Um, they they said this when we had not yet seen anything. And then a few venues, um, man, where was it? Was it up north that got it first? Um, Why north? Okay. Yeah, there, there was some places that got it first. And so we now have the entire set list and dials of the Eternals movie. Um, we're going to break it down real easy. So the commons, as we kind of assumed, are... 10 Eternals, and then the 11th common is the Werewolf Deviant, which is probably somehow the most interesting common. Maybe, maybe not. Depends on what kind of theme you would want to play out of these. Um, of note, the Eternals, the common Eternals, do not have Cosmic Energy or the Cosmic Keyword, uh, which is just interesting. And then they all share the same trait, which is Legend of the Past, when an opposing character would move adjacent, you may roll a d6 on a 5-6. That character can't move into any of the squares adjacent to this character. Um, it's hyper time, so cool. Uh, the Werewolf Deviant, on the other hand, comes in at a 100 or 50-point dial. It's meant to be played. It's a various, so it's meant to be played as in groups, which, good thing it's a common. Bad thing is it's a gravity feed common, so it's still going to be like who knows, $6 each, because this is probably one of the, the more interesting pieces of this set, if not the most interesting. Um, moving on to the rares, we once again have 10 Eternals in the rare slots, so same sculpts, just different dials and traits and point cost. All of these have at least a 100-point line, uh, a lot of them have over 100 point lines. So their shared trait for the rare part, they all have the same trait and the rares, and that is gods hidden among mortals. And that is until this character, whichever one, take your pick, makes an attack, takes damage, or is the last character on your force. They can't be targeted by non-adjacent opposing characters. So this includes outwit, perplex, uh, I guess prob, but they would be making an attack or a breakaway. Um, but yeah, so essentially you've got a protection from range-based stuff until that character makes an attack, takes damage, or is the last character, which is pretty cool. Um, it's not bad. All of these guys do have cosmic energy in the rare slots, I believe. Uh, the only one I'm going to mention, because it's the only one I think is bringing anything remotely to the table... Um, that is Sprite, number 21 in the set. 
So Sprite has a 35 point line. And on that 35 point line, there is phasing with precision strike and super senses. So it's an 11, 11, 17, 2, 2 damage with a special power. So of course that trait that I mentioned where it can't be uh, targeted from range except uh, if it has made an attack, takes damage, or is the last character on your force. Um, in addition to that, Sprite also has a special power that is Outwit, Probability, Control, and Shape Change. So for 35 points, you have two rollouts. It's only two clicks long, but you have two rollouts. You have eight range with Outwit and Probability Control, and you have Protected Outwit with Cosmic Energy. Uh, not a flyer, nothing like else really going on, but it's 35 points. It has Celebrity, Cosmic, Eternal. So it's just almost good enough where like on a celebrity team, maybe a cosmic team, it has a little spot. It's got a lot of longevity between the trait and the two rollouts for 35 points. Um, everything else is just, it's cool seeing benched powers back, but everything else just feels either squishy or like underpowered. So like yeah. Druig, whoever this guy is, um, looks cool because you have mind control, sidestep, special power, triple target, 12 attack. But then you've got like in cap and invincible that instantly goes the toughness. Just everyone feels real squishy or like they don't deal a ton of damage. There is like some decent uh, like flurry kind of pieces. Makari's kind of interesting, but yeah, nothing really amazing in the commons or rares. And then we've got the two chases, uh, the deviant chase, which is now a keyword with a total of two figures to build around. Um, one's the a deviant, generic. One's a generic. Yeah. Okay. All right. 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 I'll call that. Uh, the, the named one is crow. That is a chase for 125 points or a hundred points. Um, all the dial except the last two clicks is sidestep. And then you've got the first three clicks is Pensai, middle two clicks, uh, clicks four and five, I guess, Energy Explosion. And then the last two clicks are Blades, Claws, Fangs with Phasing and a special defense power that is not a stop click. It's just toughness. And then as a double power action, you can roll a D6 and heal Crow equal to the result uh, included with Shape Change in the damage slot. Um, top dial, Crow has protected out wit for this power and then it has uh empower enhancement leadership and shape change um protected in cap and mind control traded which is, it's fine i guess uh then it's got free choose a character within a range and line of fire until your next turn they can't have that character can't have their combat values positively modified so it's almost like outsiders except not as good um does have improved targeting through hindering and out of adjacency but yeah. Uh, and then I'll let Calder talk about the most impressive chase we've ever yes. seen in a gravity field. Oh, dude. You have the Unimind coming back. So, slight, I don't know, spoilers for people that haven't seen Eternals. I haven't seen it. I don't care. Uh, but Unimind is now in Hero Clicks again. 10 range, 2 target, cosmic energy, uh, 300 point at the top dial. Uh, and then 150 points at the lower. So, you know, a nice 50-50 split there out of 300. Oh, it's yeah, improved targeting, hindering and adjacent characters. Okay. Okay. It's, you know, it's something. We have um, we have some kind of fun traits here. So, Unimind is protected, posing probability control. Okay. Whenever they roll for a single D6, whatever it may be, increase the result by plus one. Leadership. Shape change, super senses, blades, claws, fangs, single D6 rolls, they get a plus one to it. So naturally, uh, they have a 50 50 uh, shape change, super senses. Isn't bad. But for 300 points, uh, for like a one man army type figure, uh, it doesn't have any crazy perplexes. It has colossal stamina. It can choose colossal stamina, close combat expert or range combat expert. And then at the beginning of your turn, if it has two action tokens, you can choose one that you didn't choose your last turn to use that turn. Um, and then to use this turn instead, they can use facing teleport as free or regen as free. So when they have two tokens, that is something they can do on their 11 click dial. However, 
uh man it's just so bad they just they've got nothing really great going for them like all this stuff is kind of cool on paper but for a 300 point figure yeah it's really it's really rough they yeah, got some running a, shot pen blast but i'd be impressed man. with a 13 for six pen psi running shot 10 range if it wasn't 300 points um but like what's what's that ultron He's got like similar, I mean, he doesn't have the similar damage, oh, yeah. but the other thing is no stop clicks on this Unimind. So stop clicks is rough. When you get punched through your dial, you, you it really is going to punch through the dial. Um, interesting enough, there's two clicks of 13 attack mid dial, Yeah, but then ends on 300. 15 nine. defenses and nine attack for 300 points. <laughs> 300 points. You want that 15 defense, nine attack. <laughs> hypersonic pulse wave at 150 points uh uni starts with a 12 attack three damage with blades exploit 17 defense impervious no protected pen sigh or anything like it's that's these kids said you know what calder you know you hate the eternals and even though always just destroy unimind whenever you play competitively because you're just so handsome and, and good Still gonna make a terrible Unimind for you, so that way you don't have to worry about it ever again. And you know what, Wizkids? Thank you, thank you for making my Christmas truly a merry one. I'm making the Eternal set bad, I'm making Unimind even worse. And I just, I just really want to say thank you, Wizkids. I, you have no idea how much this means to me. I won't forget it. I definitely won't forget it when it comes time for them Disney Plus pre-orders. I'll be that much. Um, so <laughs> yes, go, yeah. I, I very much appreciate it. Um, but I think casually, if you just want to dip around the 300 point figure, that's fine. That's fine casually. Yeah. This yeah. would be a chase like, that I I wouldn't feel bad playing, even though it's got like high stats, just because yeah. of that huge point total. Um, yeah. Who do you think wins between Unimind at 300 or three of the uh, three crows the... at 100? <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say Empire Two Crows and Empire Deviant? Captain America three oh. uh, hundred point Captain Americas oh. who has the same Dude. length dial for a hundred points. You mind. Yeah. I, I think do you it's a twelve, whatever top dial. I think Cap could put him away. I think Cap could put this uni away. I think it I think it becomes rough when it's the fifty fifty shape change super if it lands yeah. on like those clicks. That middle dial. And I guess the impervious will also be whatever so like i think you know top click cap's gonna get it right but um does cap have enhancement top dial? i think so so i feel yeah. like once once a team triple cap knocks unimind off of the psychic blast clicks and outwit That's, clicks because honestly yeah. outwit and psychic blast kind of it is big in our benched power universe it's uh it's not necessary to have both but yeah it really hurts having both yeah. um no, if you can get if Cap can get Unimind off of those clicks onto the Blades or Pulse Wave, yeah, the the two He's remaining Caps Jesus that are correct. probably still on Ir- Impervious, I feel like can can whittle down pretty quick. Yeah, definitely. Are you? You just and see now, Simeon. You've you've just uh, talked me into having to buy three of these Captain America. <laughs> now so I'm gonna I can, have yeah. to play them once. No, no. it's interesting. I I don't know. I was really excited when I thought that the benched powers were unbenched until I saw um, oh, certain characters movement. had improved movement through hindering, and I was like, "Oh, this is these were made with old rules. These were pre-benched yeah. powers when they designed these." Uh, but yeah, it's it's definitely a set. If you really liked the movie, if you really liked the actors, it's a cheap way to get the like likeness of them. That's kind of cool. Um, if you're looking for some casual fun, it's here. There's like plenty of casually fun like stuff in this set. Uh, I just don't think you're gonna need to pay top dollar for anything in this. No, I I hundred percent agree, with you, Simeon. It's me. I'm obviously fully skipping this set. Like you know, I, I like I said, I haven't seen the movie. Don't know anything about it, so I don't really care about any of that stuff. Don't like the characters' comics, so once again, thank you, Wiz Kids. Uh, heavily, like this does mean a lot. People, I think I'm being sarcastic. I'm not being sarcastic. Thank you, it means so much. To me, you have no idea. Um, 
But that is really pretty much it for news. There's a lot going on with Empire. We are seeing, we're, we almost have the entire set shown off or previewed or whatever you want to call it. I will say one interesting thing here about Empire Simeon, pretty yacht previews besides Scott Porter, like officially. You know what I mean? There were none of those like PNG yeah. nice digital images. There was none from like Da Vinci's DreamWorks, uh, Highlander, or like whatever those ones are on Facebook. Yeah, the, the... Game workshop, those, not game workshop, yeah, get, but get, or something. whatever. Yeah, the, yeah. the random uh, stores and stuff that were yeah. selected previously. Was, we have seen some was no... Game Trade Magazine ones, but that's, yeah. those are like solicited. As far as like, they always do. Like a digital presence, you know, they didn't even give any to Gail Simone. I don't know what's going on. That is strange. Like, they There weren't any from other content creators that have got them in the past. Uh, like, it's just very odd that... This is slightly off topic but slightly on topic um speaking of like gail simone and like the twitter kind of stuff um whiz kids did have a posting looking for a was it like media manager or like someone Hmm. someone to like i'm assuming that meant someone to like work their uh like like twitter twitter and facebook stuff and that kind of thing um so like perhaps that's why they're like you know maybe in transition like trying to get someone sure, new in or I can something see that. but who knows that's entirely speculation it could just be uh people like taking whiz kids or something and when you're looking for this person to replace here i i strongly urge you just to ask them to make you a meme any meme it can be any format ask them to to make a meme just like Maybe don't don't like rely on what you guys think is funny. Maybe ask like some other people. <laughs> Go yeah, on Reddit take it to or, the kids. or like be like, "Hey, child, the kids, how dank hey, is this? Is this is this is this based? Is that is that is that what kids <laughs> say nowadays? What do you what do you think of this meme? Is it fire? Is this beam bussin? No? Is it b- <laughs> <laughs> hey hey Timmy, no cap. What do you think of this meme? <laughs> Does this meme want make you want to dab on Fortnite really bad? Oh no, that was the worst one. That was bad, Simeon. That was bad. On a scale of one to ten, how likely are you to stop playing Fortnite and pick up Hero Clicks after seeing this <laughs> meme? All, yeah. all of our like 40, 35 plus listeners have mentally checked out. They're like, what? This is this would make no <laughs> sense. <laughs> Sorry, this guys. This is a joke entirely for no one. Because for anyone no one. young enough to understand the terms is like what cringing at how is, badly is we're like, doing, and yeah. anyone old enough that they don't care about True. these terms is like equally just filled with disdain. We're making this joke for oh yeah us entirely doing it for, for us. us yeah it's for us. <laughs> all right, um, but yeah, all right, cool. So no, that's that's Empire. That's sort of just like some random thoughts here and there, you know, about everything going on. So Simeon, um. Hey, episode 400 is coming up, and guys, you guys have had a lot of really cool input. A lot of the Patreons have had some really, like, cool input about what they want to see for episode 400. It's eight weeks away now, so if you, listener, that's what I'm talking to, talking to you right now, my dude, my guy, um, if you have any ideas for episode 400, send them our way. Uh, anything you want us to do. We're talking live stream stuff, we're talking... Uh, crazy videos we're talking podcast segments guests you want on we're talking deep dirty secrets of calder and simians that'll never see the light of day except for episode four or like whatever you want to see i don't know you know the recordings have simian release the recordings i don't know what you want for episode four. that would be a bad idea that would that would be a bad idea Um, they will be heavily redacted if that happens yeah lots of beeps and just like dead air um let us know what you guys want to see for episode 400. Also, listener, on the lookout. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Hey, wait, wait, wait. that guy's trying to merge. Just, just pump the brakes a little bit. Let him, let him get in the lane. Um, I hope I didn't cause an accident by saying Someone that. Like, well, um, Calder told me to pump the brakes. The brakes. <laughs> then you just caused the someone to jackknife on the <laughs> interstate because somebody brake checked him after merging. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Uh, don't gaslight me into, into causing an accident here. Um, <laughs> we are going to do our end of the year show coming up real soon. Sometimes we do that before the end of the year. Sometimes we do it um, in January sometime. Where I want our end of the year show to be a reflection on the entire year as a whole. You know, through December 31st. You know what I mean? Like, 
that's what I want like uh, the end of the year show to be. So sometimes, heck, I think in past we've had it in like February of next year for like the show, be- you know, for the year before, which is kind of crazy. But we have a lot of voting uh, categories that we do that is on Twitter, that is on Facebook. Um, for the Patreon members, it might be in Discord. So if you want to do Discord and everything, it'll kind of help keep it slightly more organized for us. So if you're on the Patreon or if you want to join the Patreon or whatever else, you will be able to join the Discord and we'll have that for voting. Uh, as well as all sorts of models to do a quick little disc, uh, you know, Patreon plug. You'll get cool action tokens, you get cool stickers, uh, certain tiers, you get t-shirts. Um, and then, of course, you get to play Bad Samaritan with us mostly every Sunday. Kind of depends with schedules and stuff. Try to get as many people to play Bad Sam as possible. Yeah, and then with that, you can earn all sorts of rewards by doing well at just a game. That's totally free. Like, it's just included with any of them. $1, $2, whatever. So if you bring, you know, if you think that Tyler for Heroes brings joy to you in your life and you get something out of our show, then just, you know, toss a buck our way, whatever. We use all that money to go right back into Patreon. Anything else after that goes into YouTube for making really fun videos. It goes into, you know, getting microphones and everything else set up. Gives into just making quality content. Trust me, guys. It's it's going into quality content. So do all that, you know, end of the year show, but it's seriously, it's coming up. So keep in mind of like your favorite sets, your least favorite sets, your least favorite figures, your favorite overall figure, like the best sculpt. You like best uh, primary attacker, secondary attacker, range attacker, close attacker. I don't know if we even do those anymore, honestly, <laughs> uh, but we've done them in the past. So we have all sorts of really fun categories that I like doing. We might add some. We might do like what was your favorite legacy card, you know, for stuff they just add. You know, I think we might have done a team up before. I don't actually know. We probably haven't done that, but there's a lot to vote on. There's a lot of cool stuff. And the only way to get super accurate, like end of the year show rewards what everyone thinks is the best or the worst figure means you have to vote. You need to comment on all those things. Um, so if you want to get a really cool uh, end of the year show, it really helps to have your input. This is like the f- really the only show where majority of the listener base has way, way more input, like marginally more input than Simeon and I. Because Simeon and I get the same amount of votes. We each get one vote each for each category, you know, so... Guys, you can really use your voice to uh, to shape the end of the year episode. So I'm really excited for that. It's been a fun year. And we're going to talk a little bit more about kind of the sets and everything of this year in the question section. So let's go ahead and jump into community. There are dozens of us. Dozens! But first, we're going to do a quick little uh, question here on Facebook from Malcolm Rush. It's a fun little question. And then we can kind of get into a little more in-depth question here. Uh, but Malcolm asks... Uh, us to make a hero clicks team that spells out Christmas. So the first letter in the character's name is like C H R I S T M A S, you know, Christmas. So, and then explain how we'd use it for home games, tournaments, whatever. So, Simeon, do you have a Christmas team and you just want to like rattle off, maybe not go into necessarily the powers and stuff, but just be like, here's their name. That's the version of the figure. Sure. Cause it's kind of like, yeah. I mean, it's a lot like, of figures. Yeah. I tried to go with less specific characters, but I still ended up with like two pretty. Uh, big names. So the C, filling out the C slot is Dr. Claire. So I, I didn't use the titles okay. for uh, letters. So Claire Finn being like her first name, Claire. Um, she, of course, is the the doctor from the Orville that spits out the Yafit bystander who can give everyone sidestep. And then she's got uh, support and then support as free. So just overall good figure. Uh, filling out the H is, of course, Happy Hogan. He's the Avengers driver, so he's got Passenger 2 and can carry characters with flight. Uh, pretty decent. I like him. Um, he also does work well with uh, did do Iron Man. Um, in certain circumstances, you can get little boosts there. Uh, the R in my team is Red Ghost, who already looks like Santa Claus, so I figured yes. might as well. And then I get the Super Apes. So uh, kind of going with like a drop-off team where I can give Happy Sidestep, so he's got like a 12-square effective range, and then I can give Red Ghost Sidestep, uh, using the Yafit Pog, that is. And then Red Ghost can spit out some Super Apes, potentially. The I on my team is going to be the ABPI Uncommon Iron Man. This is the one that is the holographic, hologram, whatever, uh, Iron Man. And then when he's KO'd, you can place him on from one from your sideline uh, 
into your starting area. That's how this one works. Um, but he's 50 points. He's got energy shield out with that goes to perplex. It's not as easy to switch him between those two anymore, but uh, at least you'll have starting out with and a sidestep flight. So he's an extra little taxi as well. Um, the S in my Christmas is going to be none other than Shawn Michaels looking real festive with all the <laughs> glitter and yes. explosions, yes. <laughs> I guess. Um, plus his song, like, I'm just a Santa boy. Like that's, you know, famously yes, that is, the lyrics to that's that, how song. that song. Goes. So, uh, yep. no, just a, a real fun character. Um, he has pretty much any role that I need him for. He's got perplex and he's a decent attacker, uh, carrying the T in the team is going to be Thor, who this is the Captain America chase Thor. So for 75 okay. points, he's going to be seven range, running shot, energy explosion. Of course, he's got his lightning marker that can do a bunch of stuff, and he's got a stop click. He's got prob top dial, which is nice because this is not a theme team by any stretch of the imagination. Um, the M in my team, I am now using the title for Mr. Terrific, this is the LE, Mr. Terrific 100, which will, uh, the rule of three becomes the rule of one. So combat values cannot be increased by more than one, which doesn't hurt my team, except for Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels? Actually <laughs> completely nerfs Shawn Michaels. It, it, but uh, That takes away all the sunny days Shawn Michaels is going to have on your team, if you know true. what I mean. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's okay. Um, but yeah, it, it also helps a lot of the rest of the team i guess uh it also does kind of hurt thor who has that whole energy shield thing but that's fine because i don't need all that fancy stuff because up next the a is the most amazing hero clicks figure probably ever made probably ever could be made um I don't know if Calder knows who this character is, but it's Asuka for 40 points. Oh my gosh, all right. <laughs> so everyone should know what Asuka does. She's got submission hold with the Asuka lock tokens, can deal up to potentially three damage with the Asuka locks, uh, in addition to all the other stuff that she can do. And then finally, I'm at 385 points. Who could be my S? Who could it possibly be? Well, it's S-H-I-E-L-D, Agent from the Captain America set as well. For 15 Goodness points, gracious. I get a random yeah. random starting yeah. line. He's got the espionage trait. Uh, he's kind of just nothing, but he's also, you know, Thor can carry him around and benefit from the shield team ability. Um, same with Iron Man. So, yeah, it's a fun little team. I don't think this would be at all competitive. I don't know how it would... It's a 400-point team, first of all. Uh, but yeah. assuming, like... 400 competitively i don't think it does well i do not think i think in a casual game i've got prob i've got outwit i've got a perplex i've got all the right stuff i've got a i've even got a support piece um with dr claire finn uh and i think giving everyone sidestep with that yafit pog is really cool but no i think this is just strictly a casual fun piece uh especially with red ghost spitting out monkeys um monkey yes all right dude i like it um honestly just you going over your team uh, it makes me want like we should play these we should do like a video where we play our, our christmas teams our christmas teams you know i think it'd be funny uh i like him i like him a lot so and i was really surprised about one of your picks and i suppose you'll see that here in a second my team is is actually a theme team um, I was able to to pull that off. I was pretty excited for that. Wow. So the C, a surprise to no one, is going to be Captain America. However, this is the 75-point Sam Wilson Captain America from the Captain America and the Avengers set. My H is also Happy Hogan as well. Uh, we have doubled up on H's, Simeon. Uh, I kind so... of thought we might because that's... That was like the very first thing I thought. I was like, H, yeah. H. And I was like, can't do Hulk. That's just, that's too obvious. And then I was like, Happy Hogan. But then I was like, ah, he's like probably one of the best H's. Yeah, really. Um, So, yes, yeah, so we have Cap. We have Happy Hogan. Next up uh, from R is going to be Red Hulk. Uh, Simeon just says, Hulk, can't choose Hulk. Uh, I have chosen Red Hulk. Red the Hulk is point. different. That's uh, <laughs> it's all Thunderbolt. 
It's Thaddeus, the old Thunderbolt Thaddeus Ross, this dude. Uh, so yeah, we have Red Hulk. Uh, for my eye, I have the Shifting Focus Iron Man. So just like Simeon, I've chosen Iron Man for eye. It goes with that Happy Hogan. They work well. Um, and it lets me have Shifting Focus. I've also never... So part of the reason I almost want to play these teams too is I have not played um, like that Red Hulk, this Iron Man, a few of the other figures on my team. Um, S, a surprise to no one, I've chosen Steve Rogers from the Captain America hey. set who can make someone an Avenger. So okay, see your bets now to figure out which letter I couldn't find for Avengers, um, or at least a character that I liked for Avengers, and I've chosen somebody else. Uh, let's see, KRS. Uh, T, uh, the T, I don't know how everybody's going to feel about this one. I chose the Captain uh, for my I, T. So I, that was one of my thoughts when T the, came the, the in his name. Yeah. Um, yeah, so because he is the captain, like, the captain that is not, his full he name. He doesn't go by captain. captain, and people are like, "Oh, yeah. there's the captain." Like yeah. he's like, "Hi, I'm the captain." Like the doctor, exactly. doctor. Yeah, exactly. He is the captain. So the captain, very solid. Uh, so even though we don't have a Captain America Steve Rogers, we have plenty of Steve Rogers on the team for a Captain America Sam Wilson. Now into the Moss, uh, the Mass part of the part of the name. Uh, Molecule Man has been made an Avenger here, and he's chilling on the team. Uh, yeah, Molecule Man, you know what he does. Barriers and smoke cloud and all that, all that jazz. That's Molecule Man. Uh, for A, we have Aim Red Squad. Okay. And for my final S, as you can see, I've got 35 points left in this build. Who could it be? Uh, someone who goes really well with people named Steve Rogers and Captain America. And that would be Sharon Carter. So we got a little perplexed, outwitty Sharon Carter girl there who can help out uh, Captain America and Steve Rogers' role for leadership, which is pretty sweet. So, yeah, a nice little Avengers team. We got some Shield TA. You know, we got some close combat bruisers with, like, Hulk and, you know, Falcons. Pretty gets pretty close combat -y ish later. Um. Yeah, though, so that is my Christmas. Also a 400-point team. It got to around 330 or something points or whatever, and I was like, oh, no, wait, I could move some people around here, and I could get a 400-point team, and I could... I So it, my team originally started off, I had the 25-point Captain America, and I was like, what can we shuffle on here to get to get some better better caps? And we got it. We got there. We were able to, uh, to squeeze the points in. No one's over 100 points. I think my, my first eye was Immortal Hulk. And I was like, he is killing me. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, I like, I like these teams. I like them. I like them a lot. The next question we have is over on Discord. Like I said, all that stuff about Patreon, that gets you access to the Discord. Alex asked us, with the huge delays we've seen in Heroclix this year, sets have had plenty of time to breathe, and metas can be explored in depth. While it's not intentional, does this slower release schedule seem better for the game than the normal release schedule? Normal release is about a set every two months or so, give or take, and then some gravity feeds sprinkled in, right? So we had kind of relatively normal release at the beginning of the year and this later in the year has incredibly slowed down so just a quick refresher guys uh house of x was released like the first week of january because it was pushed back from being in december and then future foundation came out tail end of february is that right simeon it was somewhere around there tail end of Sounds february beginning right, of march yeah. and i believe wonder woman was april early april somewhere in there Wonder Woman was like dropped, late April. I think mid April. Like no, April. it was it was the tail end because it was pretty much May. I think so. So tail end of April. And then it took until Rise and Fall came out in August for us yeah, to have almost, a set. Almost four months later. Months later, yeah. So that really let Wonder Woman um breathe. <laughs> it really did. It let us fully be like, whoa, these are the rules changes. And then, of course, after Rise and Fall, we just now are getting Eternals another four months later, uh, here in December. Then we'll hopefully be getting Empire here uh, the 15th of December in 10 days-ish uh, from now. So a few weeks. And then that's when pre-release is set to start this week. So we'll see what happens. Um, but yes, it's, you know, after Wonder Woman, it has been four months between every yeah. set. I'm um, glad that it was, we've... 
you Crazy. Know, we got the DC set pretty much on time. Seemed like it was actually, I think it was pretty delayed, but pretty much like towards the beginning of the year. And then, yeah, we, we had like almost the entire summer to play with just the DC set before X-Men rise and fall came. And luckily X-Men rise and fall didn't really like overturn a ton of stuff. So wonder woman still got a ton of like love out of the community. I think, I think, um, you know, and personally, this is just me uh, between rise and fall and wonder woman. I definitely played uh, more wonder woman, but that, that is of course, I have an X-Men bias, not a fan of them. I think the whole letting sets breathe depends on a lot of things. So if we were to just break this down here and just say purely for the meta. You know, I obviously personal bias and everything included here. Um, I was okay with Wonder Woman breathing and letting that in, but it, for meta, as far as meta goes, uh, it gets stale in my opinion. Like yeah. whatever's gonna pop out at you in the meta is gonna pop out right away or close to right away. Okay, it doesn't take long for people to figure out what's busted in a set and to use it because before a set comes out you know, and this has been the case for the last two three years or three four years honestly uh people are talking about it team building with, well they're always talking about it and team building with it but they've been able to play on roll 20 before the figures are released so as far as meta is concerned i personally think it hurts and makes this meta very stale when there aren't a lot of sets coming out um however if you're a person that has enjoyed the mechanics that came out in these sets and are happy that they haven't gotten shaken up then uh, well then by all means go for it but in my opinion it does it just makes the meta incredibly stale if there aren't a lot of sets coming out because right now i have no wants to play competitive because i hate swap i hate x-men swap i hate hellfire i hate all those i hate magneto and i hate professor x i cannot stand swap teams i heavily dislike swap teams so i have zero interest in playing the current like competitive meta so i'm just waiting for empire to come out which by the looks of it won't shake things up too much and also kind of adds to the swap stuff um so now i'm waiting yeah, for war of the realms to come out stuff. so yeah now i'm just waiting for war of the realms and disney plus to come out to shake up the meta again so and i know i've been ranting here for a bit simian so by all means cut me off whenever but yeah in my opinion this uh, is a set question delayed. for me because like you said um, I think in a perfect world, it would be amazing to constantly have new stuff because it would essentially be like a sealed, like where you'd have no idea, like your your opponent could be playing something from two years ago, like a two year ago meta, um, and you could be rocking something new and fresh, and they don't understand how to like how to combat it because you know just like when Vulture first came out, it was I mean Vulture was always oppressive. That's a bad example, but. But it was even more oppressive when it first came out and people had no idea how to defend mm. against this thing that could stack flurries and uh, mow down like a whole team in one turn. Um, so like until people figure something out, you know, there's like that fresh new whatever, um, like Secret Six when it first like popped out. Like imagine like if the week before Worlds that became legal and like people had just oh. like started building with it that kind of thing i mean that's essentially how goblin king won worlds it was like an untested unknown quantity that got slipped in in place of jakeem and like a few extra points yeah. and ended up winning worlds with that but um so that's in a in a perfect world i think the sets would like always be dropping and i say a perfect world because Everyone, like, so my thing is, like, the meta would also be stale if the only people that were able to play were the people that spent the most money. Um, it would be incredibly boring and incredibly stale if you had to be pumping out, like, especially at $17 MSRP for new boosters. Can you imagine if it's going to be, like, two sets a month or, you know, a set every month. That's 12 sets that you right. want to keep I'm not up saying with. I want to be burned out. No, no. That would um, suck. So that's that's the main reason I like the slower release schedule because realistically, I think it keeps more people interested in the game for longer rather than seeing, like, this insurmountable climb that they have to constantly keep building towards. You know, it's not a mountain. It's like a ziggurat where like the base has to keep getting exponentially wider. You have to keep buying 
more garbage stuff that you're never going to use just to like climb to the top and then eventually it it just collapses and uh yeah. it's structurally weak that's why i like the okay. slower release because you yeah. can you can kind of cherry pick you can wait till stuff goes cheaper and stuff doesn't really like shift around as much i think stuff will also hold its value better if you know if there's not constantly new stuff that does xyz but better um, or just different or cheaper, like, you know, however, um, if there's not that constant shift, then it does, it's, I think it's more healthy for the casual aspects of the game and for like the collector aspects. But, uh, as far as like a purely meta speaking, like competitively kind of way, um, no, the delays do suck. They, yeah. it'd be really cool to get new stuff all the time. Speaking on like the casual side. So, Looking at the casual, if I was only being allowed to play with the sets that came out this year, it does let me delve like deeper into each set and fully play each sub theme, right? Because normally after a set comes out, you'll play like a little bit here or there. You might make it like whatever, Rise and Fall, right? You might make a Shi'ar team, you know, you might make an X Men, a Brotherhood team a few weeks like later or whatever. But with everything coming out now, now you can, well, nothing with everything not coming out, I guess is what I should say, with these delays in between sets coming out, it lets you be like, well, okay, I saw what I did last week. Let's switch this around. Let's do this. And you can really like, instead of just being like, oh, okay, I played these figures. Now I'm done with them. You can kind of figure out the kind of the best way to play these figures and, and play different teams with them, which is really cool. Um, so that just talking about stuff this year, like that's neat if you like the figures in that set. I didn't like any figures in Rise and Fall. I like zero figures in Rise and Fall. So I didn't play any of that set. So that, that just sucks. So basically, for me, it's been uh, eight months since a set that came out <laughs> that I liked. You know? Yeah. That's 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 where I'm at in my Hero Clicks life. Um, for other people, not so much. But what I've enjoyed probably the most about this is going back and playing old sealed or old Golden Age figures. Because you can complain about not having new figures coming out. But there are so many figures that already exist that you guys have never played that are hilariously fun to play. Like, if you can find some discounted hero clicks, spoiler alert, there was a lot of discounted hero clicks recently. Not going to say by who, but you could have got a lot for crazy dummy cheap. Ooh, you, I like, I'm excited to go play some ADW sealed, some flash sealed, some sealed sets that I maybe played once or twice, or some sets that I'd never played sealed at all. Um, recently at our venue, we played Joker's Wild Sealed. You guys heard me talk about this. I had a hilariously fun time for a set that when it came out, I just hated it because it was garbage and bad. And it is. It is still garbage and bad, but it's less so, and it's more just laughably bla bad when everybody is playing all these bad figures. And it's not painfully bad because pushing damage doesn't exist anymore. So, boom, you know, one win for WizKids category there, getting rid of pushing damage makes old sets and old sealed a thousand times more fun to play. Like, just periods. Like, that's really, really awesome. So, probably more than anything that I've had fun with is playing figures from, like, the Captain America. I own that entire set, and I haven't played half the figures in that set, you know? Like, being able to just fully play older sets that I haven't had the time to... You know, now that in-person play is back, for me anyways, um, that's what I've been enjoying the most. Not so much in, like, the sets that have come out, because they suck, you know? Because Rise and Fall is a garbage set for garbage people. Um, I shouldn't say that. You guys aren't garbage people if you like Rise and Fall. That was that was me, and that was too much. I kind of like Rise and Fall. <laughs> oh, that's because you're garbage man, Simeon. Uh, I'm the garbage but, man. Uh, I'm the trash man. That's that's what I have to say about that. I probably the big takeaway is I have enjoyed playing older sets. Um, I can f fully look back on my collection, not have to worry about getting new stuff, and be like, I'm gonna play some of these older figures, and I've been having a great time with it. Yeah, I agree because I I've been pulling from older and older stuff recently um, for like a variety of different reasons, but um, I've been like you know grabbing like older pieces, trying to like find teams that they can work with and like make them better kind of situations. But I've also just been like, you know, kind of winging it in the casual build category. Um, because yeah, I've, so rise and fall was the last thing I bought into. I ended up pulling three black hearts and I have played black heart a total of zero times now. So 
at this point, I'm like, will I ever even play it? Because like, I I definitely don't want to play it casually. I haven't, and like, I just don't see myself doing that. Because if I'm gonna build with him, I'm gonna build with him well. Um, Hellfire Club doesn't really have any like fat that needs cut from like its builds. I guess you could do like a Magneto, uh, like full point like Magneto two by two or something and then Blackheart, and it'd be, like, a weird team. But even that would be, like, kind of too good for casual sometimes. Uh, but, no, I've been, like, pulling from all the way back in, like, Amazing Spider-Man, playing some stuff from there. Uh, recently played some stuff from, like, R.I.P. and Ooh, um, nice. Yeah, like, I, there's, you know, plenty of, like, sets that I've got plenty of stuff from. And so this small hiatus has actually been really good for my personal collection. I just realized... War of the Realms is listed <laughs> on clicksnexus.com. Uh, it's listed at Nick-y's. December 31st of 1969. Um, nice. You got to time travel back a ways to pick up that. Go to get War of the Realms. Yeah. But no, uh, it's just been really interesting to like build fully out of, you know, I think at this point, the orig- or the newer not future foundation fantastic four set um it is just the only fantastic four set but fantastic yes. forces is kind of confusing um i find i've played everything from that set now except god emperor doom oh nice i've never nice. pulled one and don't really care to um it's dope, but, though. but yeah I've, I've played everything from that set now and uh, that's one of like the first sets that i can say that i've done that because even like wolverine and the x-men Granted, that's an older set, and so there's, you know, sometimes you'd have to play with a figure because there's some really high-costed stuff in that set. Um, like the Phoenix 5 almost never gets played. But, uh, yeah, it's just interesting to be able to, like, not necessarily not necessarily completionist, like, collect a set, but completionist, like, play with a set because yeah. it's never happened to me before. Nice. Uh, I, and there are there are sets. There's like a video I have planned, which I don't know when we'd be able to make it, right? Where you just put two full sets against each other, like I did with that one Captain America um, versus the Winter Soldier. Those are obviously small sets. I would like to try it with like all the commons versus all the commons, all the uncommons versus all the uncommons. Like Power Creep, I think is what I was calling that series. I really want to do that again. It's just it's kind of a lot to do. They would be very long games that you would have to sit through. Um, I think if you're really into the technical like hero clicks gameplay part of it and seeing just how how well things have aged and everything i think it'd be a really fun video series but yeah no great question i think it led to some really awesome discussion guys let us know right into the show send us an email uh send us a message on facebook or twitter let us know what you think of the sets uh coming out in such a few and far between type fashion you know let us know with the um what would you call it, the cooling down of hero clicks and just letting letting things kind of marinate for a while. Yeah, let us know what you guys think about that, how you've been enjoying it, how you haven't been enjoying it. You know, let us know. Uh, really quick to end the show here, I'm going to do a quick Jedi Legend hero clicks tip of the week. You don't want to sell me death sticks. I don't want to sell you death sticks. You want to go home and rethink your life. I want to go home and rethink my life. So I've just been forgetting uh, to do these for... A uh, pretty, pretty long, pretty long time, if I'm being honest with you. Uh, I just, I see him on Twitter and I just forget, just probably just because it's Twitter and Twitter's the worst. So, yeah. Um, tip of the week. How to use stairs. You don't have improved movement. You don't have leap climb. You don't, you can't fly. Uh, there are no shortcuts. When you go up the squares, you have to go from one little red triangle to the other little red triangle. There is no diagonal upstairs, okay? So, uh, you know, tough luck when you're trying to running shot or charge squares or whatever, you know. Make sure you uh, make sure you go straight up the stairs. Yeah. No no diagonals here. None of that. Uh-uh. It's a good way to, Not like, uh, like uh, pro-level body blocking is blocking off, like, the stair access. Yeah. Um, your opponent can still attack the one character, so, like, but if you have, like, a tie-up piece... Um, I think we've like showcased that kind of maneuver in uh, our Thursday throwdown series a few times where like situations like that come up pretty often. Uh, but yeah, 
Are you a two stairs at a time guy, Calder? I I am mostly yeah. Normally, normally I'm a two stairs at a time guy, just because uh, it feels like pitter patter, pitter patter, pitter patter, pitter patter to um yeah go up one stair at a time. You know what I, I mean? Feel like, like I'm, if I'm only taking one stair at a time, I feel like I'm Rocky like training and I'm doing like shuffle steps. But yeah. Whereas like two feels more natural to me. I don't know why. I'm not in like a hurry. It just feels like. I don't know. No, I know what you mean. Like, you're not actually, like, I'm not actually in a hurry to get somewhere. People be like, oh, look at, look, look at this guy, huh? To get two stairs. And he's some big man. I'm like, nah, I'm just, it's better. It's better. Now, when I go downstairs, it's a one stair at a time. Definitely. Definitely going downstairs. It's a one stair at a time. Mm. Uh, like, it's dangerous. No? You don't agree? You don't I, agree? Well, I don't know, because I, I've installed shoots where my downstairs oh. were. So, <laughs> instead of walking down the stairs that I walk up... I just take my my shoot or slide. Simeon, you are so innovative. Yeah, with your um your house design. I that's that's something I appreciate about you. Is your, it's not just a normal regular little little house. Yeah, it's not up to code You've... though, so don't don't tell anyone because the city will condemn my house if they find it. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite dangerous. You don't. <laughs> I don't, I don't know what to say to that. I hey, I, I read I read all the stuff. I said the stuff on Facebook and Twitter. If you want to talk about how your house is getting condemned, it's not you're, getting you're in charge. Of the, it's only getting you're condemned in if I get the end of the episode. Uh, oh, Simeon, city's been on the line. And the if entire that time, happens, you're getting condemned. Pulling out the Pringle cans, and if you want to pull out some Pringle cans, well, more power to you. But if you want to you want to pre-order some games, well, that's a, a completely different ballpark. And we're going to need you to park your web address over at CoolStuffInc.com where you can pre-order stuff like these uh, amazing. I don't know if we if we oversold it, but this amazing Eternals set just wow. Uh, definitely can pre-order that uh, fast. Fantastic Four Empire set. Also available for pre-order, as well as all the latest HeroClix singles and sealed products. So check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Hey, use code DIAL5. It's D-I-A-L-5 for 5% off your Cool Stuff Inc. order. And like always, buff Pringles in my eyes. <laughs> Happy trails. Happy trails. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional HeroClix. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like a hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how they, six uh, how people work? think I am funny. It's the hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which you absolute fools. It's not Witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clips like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey Google, attack someone. Let's attack Simeon because he's a jerk. Happy trails.